Good morning and welcome. It's great to be here again with old friends and new to once again talk about the future of our industry and our marketplace. This morning we heard a lot of discussion about disruption uh, from, Crawf uh, from Crawford, yes, from John, from Danielle, and from David. What I'd like to do to just wrap us up for the morning is grab some of those disruptions, add a few more, and then narrow in on what the future of the enterprise IT marketplace will look like over the next several years as a result of all of these disruptions working together and accelerating each other in what we call a hyper disruption. All of these things coming together, they're working together and pushing each other faster, as you'll see in a few minutes. Um, I'd like to focus on really the three biggest dimensions of disruption that we see happening right now. A disruption in who the customers are in the enterprise, in what the offerings are that we need to develop in order to satisfy those new disruptive customers. And of course, when you've got new disruptive customers and you've got new disruptive offerings, you better believe the routes to market are going to be disrupted big time as well. So let's start first with a discussion about the most important thing, which is about customers. Because as we know in our market and in every market, the future starts with who the customers are and what they want from us. And in the IT marketplace, the enterprise IT marketplace, in addition to our traditional important customers, the CIO, the IT networking professionals, there are three very important perspectives that are coming into our market that are reshaping what we need to do in the marketplace. The first of these uh, Crawford just mentioned actually, and that's the line of business executive. And now, this has been in process for a few years, the growing influence and impact of line of business executives on the IT agenda and IT investment. First, I want to show you what they want from their own IT organization, their own IT executives, the CIOs. So we asked them to list in order. We gave them a pick list of about 15 different things. What would you like your IT organization to deliver for you? And you can see of the top four, three are really all about business impact, business relevance, business outcomes, as David was just talking about. So IT only matters, and the IT organization only matters, if they're delivering the outcome and delivering it quickly. Now, it's not any surprise, then, if you look at, well, what do they want from you, their providers? Well, we asked, actually, the uh, line of business executives and the CIOs to chime in on that question and take a look at what they had to say they want from you. Yes, of course, number one always has been, always will be, number one. Very competitive pricing. Sorry about that. But when you go beyond that, the next three, it's pretty much the same story. You know, understand our business, deliver us real uh, business value, understand our industry, have your people understand the industry, have the offerings around our industry and our business need. Okay, so bottom line, very simple. It's been happening for a while. If you've just noticed this, Welcome to the rest of our world, um, that a uh, line of business executives want business relevance, business impact, business outcome, and yes, at a good price. If you take a look at the second big growing constituency of uh, growing impact within our marketplace, it's the small and medium business. And last year, we talked about at Directions the so-called long tail of small and medium business about how the millions of small and medium businesses, even though they spend relatively little per company on IT, that's notice they go from the left, the big companies, and then the per company, it drops way down, that in aggregate, they contribute almost half of all IT spending, IT opportunity in our marketplace today. But that, if you think about the representation and the potential of small businesses by looking at other metrics, for example, headcount. Small and medium businesses account for about 70% of all employment on the planet, that we believe there is a latent, untapped demand of about $150 billion of potential new spending on IT each year out of this long tail. If only we can find new profitable ways to reach them. So that certainly makes the viewpoints and perspectives of small and medium businesses very important. I would say, for the present and future of our market. But it's not only that. It's that this potential is already being realized by some companies, by some of the companies out here. If you take a look at the IT spending forecast of IDC for 2007, 
Small and medium business IT spending is growing at two times the rate, almost two times the rate, of the large enterprises. And it's not surprising that you know, a lot of the demand within the emerging markets of India and China and the other growing high growth, super growth markets uh, is small and medium business because they're... So, you know, bottom line, if you want to outgrow the IT market overall over the next several years, you have to be successful in tapping this SMB long tail. And as a result, we'll see in a few minutes in spades that small and medium business market is in fact the test bed for experimenting for most vendors on new models, the new offerings and the new business models for the marketplace. And so much so, and David alluded to this a little bit, so much so that you know, penetrating and succeeding in SMB is not just about being successful in the SMB market, it's about developing the models that are the future of the large enterprise as well. And so what do these customers want? That, what's their disruptive perspective? Well, they want the same thing that the line of business executives want, because most of them are line of business executives. They don't have big IT staffs. You know, they want low cost, they want more value, and they want more obvious business value. But they add a third wild card into this. They want simplicity. You know, they want, in effect, day zero adoption. Plug it in, it works. Very simple adoption, very simple use. That's challenging. Now, the third disruptive constituency, which is a little farther on the edge, but growing and coming quickly into the center of our radar screen, is this next generation of worker. Um, they are very comfortable with so-called Web 2.0 type of technologies like Danielle was talking about. Whether it's SMS, whether it's blogs, wikis, social networking, social bookmarking, and yes, uh, for better or worse, lots and lots of video, you know, homemade video is part of their world. You know, they uh, have a very blurred line between work and lifestyle. And so therefore have a very low tolerance for lagging technology in the workplace, technology that lags what they experience in their own uh, personal life. So what do these folks want? Well, they want the same thing that the other folks want. You know, they want IT to be business relevant. They want it to be low cost. They want it to be simple. But now throw in one more thing. They want it to leverage the fresh and familiar technologies that they are using every day outside of the workplace and, and often within the workplace. So, you know, key message here is these are three constituencies that if they aren't in the center of your radar screen as you plan out what your offerings are going to look like, your offerings are just not going to be the ones that are the successful ones in the future of the enterprise IT market. So I want to jump from these disruptive customers to, you know, what do the offerings need to look like? Uh, in order to be successful in the future of the enterprise that these customers are driving.